Good afternoon. My name is Fiona Wilson, and I have the honor of serving as the Deputy Chief Sustainability Officer at the University of New Hampshire and as Director of our Sustainability Institute. We're delighted that you can join us today, albeit virtually, to the University of New Hampshire, the state's flagship public university and a national leader in sustainability in higher education. Today's event is the first of our 2021 Changemaker Speaker Series. This series is one of a number of programs organized here at UNH by the Changemaker Collaborative. The Changemaker Collaborative is an exciting collaboration between the Sustainability Institute, the Peter T. Paul College of Business and Economics, and the Carsey School of Public Policy. We bring together students, faculty, Faculty, staff, businesses, nonprofits, and government agencies committed to advancing positive change for the good of all. The collaborative supports the next generation of skilled, courageous, and confident leaders through real world experiences and the tools of public policy and business while helping our community partners advance their sustainability initiatives. We embarked on this partnership because we understand that the scale and the complexity of, race, of, of, of the world's challenges, including the climate crisis and racial injustice, must be addressed by collaboration across public, private, and nonprofit sectors. And we know that the tools of public policy and ethically governed commerce are critically important to mitigating and adapting to these challenges in a just and equitable way. We're absolutely we're delighted to partner today with our good friends and colleagues at the Aspen Institute's Business and Society Program on this timely event. The Aspen Institute um, Business and Society Program was founded in 1998 and works with both business leaders and faculty and business school uh, leaders to align business decisions and investments with the long-term health of society and the planet. I've been privileged to participate as a faculty member in their excellent programs and initiatives over the last 20 years. And so it's a real honor today to collaborate on this event. We're also delighted to co-host this event with the Responsible Governance and Sustainable Citizenship Project here at UNH's College of Liberal Arts and with our friends at New Hampshire Businesses for Social Responsibility. I'd also like to thank friends and colleagues, UNH professors Jennifer Armstrong, Strong and Betty Woodman. We thank you for your partnership to integrate this event into your business ethics courses and we extend a special welcome to all of your students. Professor Woodman has also embedded this event in her capstone class for UNH's dual major in sustainability. And lastly, I wanted to give a special shout out to the amazing honors students in my own class, Business for People, Planet and Profit. Before I introduce our speakers today, I have a few housekeeping notes to share. We will be recording today's session and we'll be sharing a video archive after the event. In Zoom's webinar mode, only our speakers today will be visible. The cameras and microphones for all other participants are muted automatically. If you are having any technical issues, please send a private note through the chat function in Zoom to, to uh, UNH technical assistance who's on, um, on today. And just to give you a, a sense of today's format, after my remarks, um, we, I'll introduce our speakers and then we'll have plenty of time for dialogue and Q&A from the audience. So we encourage you to enter your questions in the Zoom Q&A function as we go through today's webinar. Enter your questions at any time to put them in the queue and we'll get to them later in the program. We host the Changemaker Speaker Series because we know the vital importance of shining a light on pioneers and thought leaders, allowing UNH students and the broader business community to connect with and learn from powerful role models for sustainable business. So I couldn't be more excited to introduce today's speakers, both respected pioneers and thought leaders in this field of business and society. First, Deborah Merrill Sands, Dean of the Peter T. Paul College of Business and Economics here at, at UNH. Deborah is a longtime colleague and friend and one of, one of my most important mentors. I've been lucky enough to work with Deborah not once, but twice, uh, first at the Simmons College School of Management where she was Dean and now here at UNH. I'm also thrilled to introduce Judy Samuels, Samuelson, one of the people I respect most in this field. 
As founder and executive director of the Aspen Institute's Business and Society Program, it's no exaggeration to say that she has led a visionary and highly effective 10-year campaign to disrupt Milton Friedman's narrative about corporate purpose, to build a new focus on long-term value creation, and to also rethink executive pay. Thank you, Judy, for your pioneering work and for joining us today. And with that, I will hand over to you, Deborah. Great. Thank you very much, Fiona. This is going to be a, a wonderful discussion. It's fun to be together with old friends as we move forward with this. Um, and I just wanted to kind of take a moment to say how I've come into this conversation, because um, for the first 15 years of my career, I worked in international economic development on issues of sustainable food production, poverty, inequality, et cetera. And all the way through that 15 years, I kept working with government and public institutions. And I kept thinking to myself, what is the role of business? How can business be a partner with these other sectors in solving some of these major problems? It was very clear to me at that point, the government and not-for-profits could not do it alone. So that was many years ago that I began asking those questions, probably 20 years ago. And that's really what brought me to take a fork in my road and move into business schools and business education. And as I embarked on that quest to answer that question, I had the fortune through connections at Ford Foundation to meet Judy Samuelson, who's our guest speaker today. And just as she was transitioning from Ford uh, to launch this new enterprise of the Business and Society Program at the Aspen Institute. And I've followed her and interacted with her and learned from her over the last 20 years. And I can really honestly say that she is one of the most impactful change makers and thought leaders, as Fiona mentioned, in this whole area. She's had a huge impact on business education, a huge impact on uh, corporations in America, and we'll learn much more about that today. And I have a really deep respect um, for the work that she's done over the past 25 years, as Fiona alluded to, and this is what will be a major focus today, of consistently and thoughtfully um, and engaging many people in the discussion to try and challenge the model of the supremacy of stakeholder capitalism and to get us to move towards a shift of the value of stakeholder capitalism and what that could do for creating, as she says in her book, real value uh, for companies, but for society more generally. And so it's really with these, this thinking and insights that she's generated uh, in her new book that we'll be drawing on today. I was just telling her it's one of the, the best books I've read uh, in a long time. And it really pulls together in a very tight and comprehensive way the arguments that have been evolving and developing over the last 20 years in this field. So her book and her and the discussion that we're having today is really timely because in August 2019, it was a pivotal moment when the Business Roundtable, which not everybody might know what it is, but it's the preeminent association of nearly 200 CEOs of the largest corporations uh, in globally and in America. And they issued a really paradigm shifting statement on the purpose of the corporation. And as Judy said at one point in her book, it was a shot that was heard around the world. And so in many ways, Judy, I'm sure that was an amazing day for you where you must have seen it as the culmination of so much of the work that you've done and the influence that you've had. Not that you were the sole person, obviously, but it really was manifest everything that you had been putting forward. And just briefly for people who don't know uh, what that full purpose statement was, it's their new conceptualization of corporation purpose reduces the primacy of creating shareholder value and elevates the importance of companies' commitment and accountability to stakeholders. That's employees, customers, suppliers, the communities in which they operate and serve, and the natural environment which bestows resources and enables societies and economies to thrive. So that, that business roundtable statement was really a marker in the shift in corporate thinking, ways of working and perceptions of accountability. And the timing, I think, is, is prescient because shortly after August 2019, the COVID crisis erupted. 
our focus on race, systemic racial injustice erupted, and we began to see all these forces in our society and pressures that we hadn't experienced before. And it's very aligned with thinking about who are we accountable and who our business is accountable, and how do we, as corporations, for example, or businesses, support our stakeholders through these really, really challenging times. So it couldn't be a better foundation for the start of this conversation and Judy, for you to share the thoughts that you put together in your book. So I'm gonna stop there and turn it over to you and ask you to kind of give us some of the key highlights from the book that you've just published. Thank you. 